what is good. Fresh crack. We're ready to go. We got the tripod. We're ready to roll. <laughs> we, got, we got old old Jason. We got old Big D. We're ready to go. We're fired up. Uh, we, we did a little uh, too high ADP review of the FFD. Uh, and now we are going to do a too low uh, FFD ADP review here. Um, you know, th these are guys that we're, we're like, we're in like, like with. Like, you like, like, like them? <laughs> yeah, I like, like them. Um, so, uh, off the rip here, uh, you bring a guy, I'll bring a guy, and we'll have a list. And then that's what people will really like. And we'll be in and out in five minutes. So, who's your... Uh, guy that you're really in like with over there uh jason i'm gonna go with someone that no one likes mm -hmm. Najee harris love it Najee you harris. got another one for us i don't know that would take us over the top five mm -hmm. and i don't want to disrespect the title but if you stick around after this list we're gonna give you more i promise big d yeah i'm going uh hollywood brown hollywood brown you got another hollywood. one um, I'm, you know, I always got to throw some love to Miles Sanders. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I want him in our list, our top list. Here, sure. So. Sure. Uh, I, I'm going to go Kyler Murray, Ramondre, uh, Kenny Pickett, Waller, Kendra Miller, Deontay oh, Johnson. Great. So there goes our list. Boom. <laughs> Son of a bitch. There it blew your title out of the water. Uh, your top five, six, four are all out of there. You, you might as well just go bitch. 36. Uh, all right, guys. It's like, see you, see you later. <laughs> yeah. Shopping at Costco. You go in with Shopping something, at, you come out with 20 others. That's right. Somebody check my receipt at the door. I'm fucking, you know, ready to go. They're not really checking. How do they know? <laughs> you know, they're just looking to see if you're nervous. Yeah. <laughs> just grab it from them and start running. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's get into this. We're going to kind of run down our ADP. We will talk about some of those guys, but we will also talk about some oh, other that's guys. That's our ADP. We have Boom. ADP. See, we told you. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Um, we are doing live uh, mock drafts, uh, live streaming on Mondays or Tuesdays. We haven't quite settled into I which think we'll day. Go Tuesday this week. I think we're going Tuesday, 9.30. Try it out. Eastern Standard Time, Tell PM. Tell us in the comments below which works better for you. Follow us on uh, at the FF Dynasty on Twitter to get the link or be a patron and, and you get first crack. So uh, plus as well as other long clock mocks that we're doing, you know, one or two a week every week. So this is where most of this ADP comes from. Right. So let's get into it uh, right off the rip. Uh, I think we had a, a, a quick discussion about is, is Lamar Jackson is, is is he too low at six? He is for me. I don't want to go off the rails, but I mean, it's. <laughs> the way that I look at Lamar, he's uh We already did our obligation. Yeah. Rail it up. He's over he's over Herbert, he's over Burrow Woo! for me personally. And I know that's a hot <sighs> take, but oh, I, it's hot fire I right there. Yeah, I think uh <laughs> when it, I'm I'm playing to win I play to win the game. So in Lamar, you know, he can single handedly win the game for me in, in, in many aspects. That offense is changing, it's looking up. Things are looking on up for for me. He's he's a little higher than Herbert and Burrow. Um, I know that's crazy, but that's just the way that I like to build my teams. I like the rushing upside, but I don't think he's as horrible as a passer as people t tend to think he is. And I think that's going to come out in the wash this season as as that offense has changed a little bit. And believe it or not, they might have some healthy players on the field too. So. I don't know. Rashad Bateman's already. Even dealing with Deemed issues up, with his yeah. screw foot but uh, it's you know seeing that but we're already ahead of where we would be if there was an injury to the ravens in right. the last few years <laughs> right. you know it's usually like right we're, there before we the have flowers starts. who we absolutely love over here you're too low yeah. on him for sure um you know bonus there you go um <laughs> you know you have zay who i think is going to be an absolute baller i think we're too low on odell which we'll get to where he is he's fucking dead but i think odell's going to come out and probably have a pretty good season he better because uh, all that fucking money they paid him. you know you have you have duvernay who was you know decent strong. in in spots last year he can't be the guy but if he's your third or fourth yeah i think that's fine um yep. you know and then and then likely was outstanding when when getting i think i saw a stat today 50 percent uh of snap share or whatever he would have been uh one of the best rookie t tight end seasons that we'd ever seen had that kind of continued um and i believe that was a scott barrett stat i i don't have it uh, in front of me i just was better cite your scroll and scroll and scroll well, I'm, if it's scott i'm giving him the love because he that guy crushes uh with with numbers he anyway does. um you know so I, I get it uh if, if it's six point passing touchdown maybe maybe you consider burrow or herbert over lamar still but anything less with the legs i think i think i'm i'm, I'm i could understand what you're saying i I think it's more properly rated there. 
I, it feels like probably a lot to take to take him over Burrow and Herbert. I feel much for whatever reason safer. You could just say guys. injury wise, you would feel right. a little. Which I guess that has been overblown a little bit. Maybe it's a, a bad stigma that's not necessarily what you think it is. But recency bias has him missing games, you know. Mm. Uh, but. I will just say this, that we had Lamar Jackson as a big trade for target early in this offseason when he was going yeah. at the end of the first or early second. And we were telling you, you got like, go buy some Lamar Jackson and now look at his ass. Everybody's right? on Deontay right now. Every show I watched, Deontay, Deontay, Deontay. I was telling you like Might January. Been the first short I ever put out was yeah. Deontay and Lamar Jackson. Like, Try trade to tell for, you. You must trade for these guys. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, Justin Fields at 110. I would take Deshaun Watson over him, who's at 2-1. So You're not high enough on Deshaun. Uh, Watson, that's who I wanted to go with in the opener. Was Watson Deshaun. might be a little low. I think you're getting the rust knocked off. Last year was, was good for him to go in there. He got some hostile environments. Some people were upset. Time goes by. People aren't quite as upset right I now. I think they'll probably still be about still, the same level of not, They're upset. not going to be the same level of upset. It's just not the way things work, man. It just isn't. Like, that was that was at the forefront of things. We're a whole season fucking removed from that now. And it's there, there will still be some people who are upset about it, but it's not going to be anywhere like it was. And if he starts, if he comes out there and starts winning, then a yeah. lot of people won't give a shit, especially anybody involved in that team. And I think he is going to come out there and start winning. I think they're going to revamp the offense around what he does. And why wouldn't you? I think, you know, he's always had, you know, pretty distant escapability and some legs there. Uh, and there's there's good weapons all around him. Uh, so, I, you know, fields, I think fantasy wise, I you know, I, I would I put them kind of neck and neck because I do respect the, the legs of fields. I just I've seen Deshaun Watson be a top three quarterback. Uh, so I, I'll, I've. I'm fine with that, and I yeah. think I think him playing through some shit last year and sucking was only was good was form. good to get that all that stuff out of the way. So. Interesting looking at sleeper ADP, he is at 21, and in our ADP is at 13. I've taken him a lot because I want I'm taking him at the back end, end of that, uh, that or a t I want first a second every time. I want yeah. a quarterback, and he's always available at the end of the first round. So I probably should have passed on him, knowing that's what I would have taken him, and just to see where he falls. Um, so it's interesting with ADP and doing mock drafts. Like you go into it, maybe you try different strategies. Maybe you don't take the guy that you want to take to see if he falls. Maybe you do a bunch of these drafts with this and you don't want to take the same guys every time. So you try something out just to see what it's like. Yeah. So that's why we're trying to do as many as we can. We're trying to start them up all the time. So definitely come join us either on Twitter or on the patreons but uh, uh I, if it wasn't for me this value would be even lower and we're still even like well, in I mean, this if, order if, if i'm in that back half i'm i'm with i'm that same way too so but you know i'm i'm scooping him everywhere i can in the 111 112 110 19 i'll um you know if if J justin jefferson's gone i'll, I'll take him big uh, d so. you on board with all that or you, you got a differing opinion uh muscle man so i'm right in the middle it, it, i'm I'm neither hot nor cold on on Watson. I'm, I'm playing the Goldilocks game with him. I I do want to point out on our FFD ADP that uh, we do do a third round reversal most of the time. So that I do think that that sometimes plays into some of these some of these values that that you were talking about. It Jay, you're if you're at the end of the round, um, if you're in the 12th spot, that is, um, you know, there there could be a little bit of how you're going to build your team baked into some of these values so you I need might a see quarterback down, that's spots exactly. it, it wouldn't yeah. matter i don't think to me that third round reversal right there maybe i should well, be considering it, it more yeah, and i go tigers and and i yeah. love deshaun and and, and quarterbacks yeah. i need a quarterback i can't i can't not take a quarterback in the first round it feels like i mean i yeah. guess i could take jefferson and chase over deshaun if you want to do I, that i can't be mad at you and this is super flex tight end premium ADP, we should have said that off the rip. My bad. You can um, tell it's six quarterbacks right off the, but, off the rip. you know, we should be saying that. And, but every time and we do this. for the people that, like, are saying, hey, I, I really – I wish you'd do a 1QB1. One. I wish you'd do non-tight end premium, which we're probably never going to not do at least 1.5 We're going to be doing 1QB one, one mocks we'll do for some more live streams. But, mm -hmm. you know, you just, you just shift all the quarterbacks down. It's really just – you know, the rest of it's all kind of the same. Right. And it makes it a little more fun playing Superflex because you don't know who, what skill position player to take. Let's look at quarterback because they're right. elevated. You know, it just makes it more fun. And, and we're trying to normalize, yeah. definitely trying to normalize tight end premium and Superflex as well. So, uh, But there's not that far off. You know, you just adjust 
slide all those QBs down. If we did one video called where to take your quarterback in the one QB league, yeah, not then we the don't have to round. do any more. <laughs> right. Like, That's well, it. maybe like they're in the fifth, sixth, seventh. There's some upside, yeah. you know, yeah. guys like maybe Lamar Jackson or something. You can get in the fifth or sixth round. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what happens. Stay tuned for well, the mock on Tuesday night. And I think that's a important part, Jay, that if you're looking at, no, hopefully you're looking at our ADP, but if you're looking at it in general, you know, one thing that we're putting on there is where the wide receivers were drafted. What what number are they? Wide receiver 15, wide receiver 14, you know, so you don't just have to look at the AB, ADP number. You can also look at where, you know, how, how many wide receivers are coming off the board before that. And you can make some, you know, simple, simple math adjustments when you're thinking of ADP. If you are in one of those one quarterback leagues or whatever, you know, maybe, discount the quarterbacks but also just look at where are the wide receivers being drafted he's the 15th uh, player who is the 15th dk dk metcalf is the 15th wide receiver coming off the board so that kind of also gives you some just general general guidelines if you're right if you're using that for reference yeah next thing you're going to do is tell me that you're playing no ppr it's just yeah just standard man yeah. <laughs> it's a, the standard uh, touchdowns only league Sorry. right it's time to um, grow up kids so uh, next, next for me, real quick, just to keep this moving, or uh, get younger, old ass people. Yeah, <laughs> it would be Kyler Murray, too low, two seven. That's got to come up for me. I mean, look, I know, and he's even lower, I think, in sleeper ADP. Let's check it but, out. But you know, he he's just consistently been in the top, you know, five to eight quarterbacks, ten. If, if he's healthy and playing, and I know, I, I you oh know, my God, forty two. I don't love uh is that two quarterback? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Um forty two, is that what you forty two overall in sleeper eighty fourth round? That Holy makes smoke. Absolutely no sense. Even in this like I'm I'm down to on the back end of those drafts, if you didn't get two quarterbacks or if you didn't get one quarterback or whatever, I'll take Kyler and just like he scores fucking fantasy points, man. That's really like mm-hmm. I don't I don't enjoy the attitude and his aura uh, that he puts <laughs> off necessarily all the time. And maybe some of that he's been crushing rehab, though. Maybe some of that will change with with maybe him and uh, old boy just didn't really hit it off. Uh, Cliff. Cliff. And maybe they were just tired and it was I can't time imagine for, hitting it off with the new guy, though. Well, I don't know. But, you know, if it it's the general manager, the weird one, if it's a little like, bit more Kyler's team and a system that he likes a little more, maybe I don't know. But either way, like he's mobile enough. I'm not worried about the injury. You may be a little slow build into the season here, uh, yeah. but the, he's, he scores points with his legs. He's got a rocket for an arm. Um, and and I've just seen him get it done multiple times. So I'm 42 is ridiculous. I'm saying two seven is is probably a little too uh low for my taste there so let's get that up a little let's keep it keep it moving here uh christian mccaffrey eh. uh tyree kill t higgins we talked about those guys jamar gibbs i i was i think properly rated at this point uh i I was maybe thinking a little too high but uh, you know i'm coming around to the jamar gibbs at at 310 being my rb6 like i'd rather have jamar gibbs than kenneth walker at this point um I wouldn't mind if Gibbs slipped down a couple more at from at three ten being the RB six for us. Um, but I think you know, people I already haven't pegged as a top five RB. I mean, he's probably going above Barkley and other other drafts. Let's see where he is on he's, sleeper. He's, he's insulated. Here. He's in a good offense. He has a good offensive line. They have a good offensive coordinator, a good system, and a, and a you know serviceable QB. So uh, you know they got him at twenty seven overall over Dak Prescott, T Higgins, Kenneth Walker, Kyle Pitts down on Gibbs what are your thoughts on Gibbs there big D yeah I, I'm kind of like you I, I don't I thought it was a tad high but as I started looking at it and realizing at that spot I would probably if I if I'm a big Gibbs fan I probably would reach for him I, I think the upside's there the draft capital's there the you know this the scheme of what they seem like they wanted to do with Swift and now that they have him I mean everything's pointing up it's all it's all it's all gravy baby yeah. but um i think you know i think i i understand his value being a little bit higher i i agree with you there's a couple running backs behind him that i i think i would personally probably pick up um over him but um i i don't think it's too high i don't think it's too low i'm gonna go with a goldilocks stance again on him i, I it's fine for where he's at for me yeah with that medium sized lukewarm porridge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, drinkable I, I, tea, you know. First, I was t- I was like trying Drink to think of a, of a uh, doesn't she have like pigtails? But it's, it's more of the porridge. I, I like. Di- <laughs> go ahead. 
I was just gonna say that's a different show you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I like the. I think. I think Drake London's a little low. Uh, JSN maybe a hair low. Uh, for me, I've been loving getting the Drake London in these drafts. I pretty much draft mm-hmm. him every time, and that end of third, fourth turn, um, and then we get to that uh, Najee Harris. Uh, Josh Jacobs, Eckler, Stevenson, Stevenson, Harris, and Jacobs for me are all guys that are too low. Uh, all need to be higher. All should be for me above ETN and, and Kenneth Walker. Um, you know, again, just seeming to be bona fide RB ones without much competition. Going to get a ton of uh, targets, a ton of carries in the gut there, uh, and are on. Uh, you know. Like I said, uh, un, unchallenged for, you know, there's not too many places where it doesn't seem like there's, you know, a, a committee of sorts. And it seems like all those guys uh, are cleared for, for takeoff there. So I, I think those guys are all a little too low uh, at 4'9", 4, 4'10", 4, and 4'12". Permission to buzz a tower. Yeah. Permission denied. Denied. <laughs> I'm doing that shit anyway. <laughs> um, so, you know, I know nobody likes Najee. And for some reason, Josh Jacobs just continues to just crush finally getting a little respect but not enough um and it'll probably still never get higher than that you right know? And uh, he only has one more year left with mcdaniels it feels like that's a little shaky there with mcdaniels it's not like he blew it out of the water year one from an overall standpoint uh, josh jacobs did though so sure I don't give a fuck. sure like, and they they franchised him so right. he's back one more year with them but right. his future a little uncertain uh, McDaniel's, you know, I don't know. So I, I, he's probably not a Raider after this year, right? Yeah, uh, we don't. Josh Jacobs. Yeah, it doesn't matter to and, me. And Ramondre Stevenson, maybe not a Pat. Uh, Najee Harris, probably, I think, he has another year on his deal. Yeah, he's got with the fifth year Steelers. option. Steelers. Najee wasn't a first round pick, was he? Hundred percent was. Oh, so a little uncertain. I, that's why Najee. I mean, he's definitely got a little more solid of a role, a little bit longer than the other guys. So he, for me, you know, he was the one guy I wanted to get at the top of the show. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not mad at. Drafting Stevenson or Ramondre either. Big D. Oh, I'm just I'm just waiting, man. I'm I'm waiting for the the Sandman is coming. So you know <laughs> the. I'm, any any love for those guys? Or are you you're 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 okay? You're you're uh, Goldilocks in it again? Or are you or you you think those guys are properly rated or maybe even too high? Or or you, you like those guys or not really? No, I like them. I, I think they're. I, I think you know. I think Stevenson is probably a little. If I'm looking at the group, I'd say Stevenson is probably a little too low for me. I, I would pop him up above a few of them and and Najee, you know. Um, and and I'm all over Eckler because he's a he he can, he can be you know he's such a he's such a dominant player when when he's on and when the Chargers are on that that he he tends to be on a lot of my teams and startups. So, so in that fourth round, those two are kind of uh, those three, I guess the, the three at the back end of the fourth are probably too low for me. If, if I'm in the front half of that fourth, they're probably going to go before some of these other guys, but yeah, um, it looks to me like the fourth round is a decent, decent place to grab a running back. That's where I want to get much. my running backs late, late fourth, <laughs> fifth. Real. That's where I, I'm fine. If that's my first one, fine with that. Love all those guys right there. Um, and I know there's the dead zone. I'm not, you know, the, there's the, there's we're creeping in the dead zone area for running backs. But I, uh, again, I play we're putting the, uh, we're putting the fun back in the fantasy football and, and I'm playing to have players on my team that I think are going to win. And I also enjoy um, watching and Eckler is one of those players that I just sure you know I enjoy watching Stevenson's one of those players too that I just I just enjoy watching them so fun baby don't forget the and F Ramondre's got he's he's tied up till 24 so he's got mm-hmm. he's got even one more so let's keep it moving here uh Tony Pollard and Chubb I think those guys are interested that we see a big block of of running backs going here as you mentioned there good spot to take running backs here four nine to, to five four and then you could even go up to you know, ETN at four six, four six to five four. You got a big block of green there, which in sleeper that's running backs. That's why they're green on this uh, chart here. What are your guys' thoughts there? Is that is Pollard too low, too high? Chubb too low, too high? Pollard for me is uh, is too high. I I mean Chubb. I think is I think that Chubb is fine. Uh, Chubby's doing doing just fine. But <clears throat> Pollard for me, I I. I I know that we've kind of talked about this and kicked it around. I I, ju- I just don't believe in in the long term aspect of Pollard. I think he'll be okay this season, but I I just don't I don't know where he's going to be. Um, while you were talking, I clicked on it, then I clicked off of it. But 
you know, he's 26, so he's older than, you know, um, he, he's on the older side, I would say. I know that his tread hasn't been used. That's that's an argument that gets thrown back at me. But but I, I haven't I, needed I still, new tires, that's for sure. He hasn't, yeah, he hasn't had to, to get that uh, four tire special, you know, buy three, get one free. But but I still just kind of feel like his uh, his outlook and I, I don't know about the Dallas offense. Um, I he anyway, too high for me. Yeah, the for me Pollard is coming off an RB eight of of you know I I I don't think it's going to get any worse for him play involvement touch wise now certainly a little more concerned without Kellen Moore being there a little bit I think that's a that's a valid point there uh, but mm-hmm. you know there there also isn't really anybody in there to challenge anything that Pollard has going on right now so for one year it seems like you're going to get it and then he's again a little bit more in the Eckler mold where not high mileage to start with and then does more, uh, you know, catching the football wise and uh, explosive wise. So I, th- I think he could be well into good usage into the 30 uh, year mark, 28, 29, 30. So, you know, if he's if he's 26 this year, basically you're getting to 26 all year this year, I believe. Um, so you're getting, you know, from 26, 27, 28, if you get that good three year window from Pollard, what else do we care about uh, at that point? Like, I think he'll be very productive into that 28 season. Um, and like I said, RB8 this season, if they bring back Zeke, great. I think that I think they should bring back Zeke. Uh, but I think I don't that that makes me feel fine about Tony Pollard. Like if I think I think better, <laughs> I think he needs a little bit of somebody else back there, especially yeah. that does a little something different. So we don't have to use him as a hammer uh, of any yep. sort you can kind of keep him in the role and expand it a little bit uh make him part of the of the team but i i'm into pollard i think it's properly rated there um so disagreement and then how about chubb pollard real quick he was he was a april baby so just turned 26. just turned 26 right so you're going to get all year at 26 and then so 26 27 28 you get Three years. I mean, after three years, who the fuck knows of anybody? So, I don't uh, think yeah, I his just value's don't know if I like going off. Oh, sorry, go, Jay. I was just saying, I don't know that he'll ever his value will ever be higher. So people like to play that game where it's probably not going up in ADP next year. I mean, I don't. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, he, he probably. I, I think it's it's probably maybe close, but I don't care. Like I'm 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 drafting Pollard to win. Like sure. that's I'm drafting a running back here to win. And and I think I think at worst case scenario it stays the same or goes up a little bit if he continue if he's RB eight again or is scoring points like he's either RB eight or RB seven or RB six or RB five or RB nine. Uh, I think that you know you, you you might even be able to tear up a little bit because of scarcity of the position of. You know, and kind of how he gets it done with the explosives, and is going to have a nice highlight package uh, there. So, you know, for me, yes, there is something to be said for. But I, I, I understand that ceiling, that argument when you're saying like, you know, I almost don't necessarily believe in the player, but I believe in the player. Like, and I, I think he's going to score you points. So I, I'm not scared of buying in at the quote unquote ceiling of Tony Pollard. What do we think about Nick Chubb? I like, I like. I don't ever find myself drafting him, but Nick Chubb at 504 could win you the league. Like, I know he doesn't catch passes, and so he can never be any good. And his ADP is certainly never going up. He does have one more year left on his deal. Uh, they do have a potential out with only $4 million dead. But if he has a good year, which he just came off a good year, doesn't look like he's slowing down, even though he is 28. He's a December baby, so you get him 28 all through the season. He's 27. Um this is 28 right here, but is he only 27? Let's pull him up on the sleepers. Sleeper has him at 27, yes. Oh, so he won't be 28 until December no, then. you get 27, 28, if three years, 29. Well, he, he'll, three be year under, he'll be an unrestricted free agent after next year if and they decide to keep him, which it only costs him like $11 million, which will probably be like to franchise him and be the same if, thing. So if I we think playing out that contract. If we think this offense. I can get two more years of Nick Chubb in this offense. If we think this offense is going forward like we were talking about how Deshaun's going to be good, then this is going to be the best offense Nick Chubb has ever played in his entire career and just should and be gangbustered. Right. And he doesn't have Hunt with them, right? Right. So yeah, I, yeah. I agree with you. That's why I think his value is is fine because I I think Cleveland in general, especially if you just take those last the last quarter of the season, right when Watson kind of came in and was finding his feet, like I think that offense is going to be better, 
And if the offense is better, then Nick Chubb is better. And then there's not a lot of competition around him for, for touches. And so, um, so I, I, I mean, what's the sleeper I, ADP on him? He is a little bit above Tony Pollard. He's at forty-seven, which yeah, he, is he's, four eleven. He seems like a, a guy higher though, than in, ours in in drafts that he in money drafts, bigger money drafts that he would be a guy that would slip though, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. To at least that's what it's kind of always been like the entire career of Nick Chubb for the most part, at least the last year or two. Well, he doesn't catch yeah. passes. His ceiling is RB six. Um, so it's you know it's ah uh, gee, let me think. I'll I'll have that. It's a it's a build decision a little bit here if you draft Nick Chubb right for you know? sure yep. you pair him up with like Tyreek Hill you know I mean Chubb's on a Cup. team where, I, where I'm heavy you know heavy probably quarterback wide receiver build and then and then I'm coming back through and gonna take a series of running backs and <clears throat> I mean I think if I the first four rounds and maybe I took one of those high tight ends right if I had took one high tight end two two quarterbacks on a wide receiver I think throwing Chubb in there as my as my first running back on my team, I'd, I'd feel good about because I do think he can hold down at least that back half of the RB1, you know, the t- top 12 territory and probably with a little bit higher potential than that. Um, I don't I don't know what his projection is, but I, I would think that he's he's at least in that, you know, eight to 12 range for me right. as far as is that. And and like you said, three, he's got this year in cleveland he's got next year in cleveland and then from an age perspective he probably has one additional year that i would love to have his production so so i don't um i don't have any yeah any palms with that i just have a major knee injury in his history he does so that's Doesn't always been a little like tentative but it him, hasn't though. you know he misses some time here and there uh but you know it is it is sort of a you know a little bit of a because when you do take him you miss out on a jordan addison a Pittman, a quentin johnston uh, so, you know, you know, potentially Kittle or Jamison Williams or Burks. Uh, so, you, you know, it is a little bit of a of a choice that you have to make and live with that you are sacrificing long term potential value, which the big pundits, you know, want, want you to have. And it's understandable that, you know, maybe you would want Jordan Addison over Nick Chubb in, in a lot of situations. But, you know, Nick Chubb is is pretty much almost guaranteed to outscore everybody we just named by a decent margin maybe it, not Pittman if things really go well this year um it is but, a good point though you probably can't trade Chubb for any of those players well yeah so it's a you know it's no. it's the idea of kind of the, your different builds like if you you know you can you could always trade for Chubb by going uh the opposite direction but if you draft Chubb getting to Jordan Addison is going to be a tough struggle to get back to Jordan Addison or whoever you want to Quentin Johnston Michael Pittman uh, Javante, maybe while well, Javante's below him, that's another running back, not a good example. Jamison Williams was what I was looking for. Traylon Burks to get to those guys, you know, if you draft Burks and and right. and say you need the running back, you could probably trade Burks for Chubb and a first. Um, so you know, it's kind of the different ways to go around building your team, and and we're gonna have uh, probably next week. I'm gonna dive into this build theory that I've been kind of going throughout these drafts. But if you're building your team a certain way to win and you don't really necessarily want to have to trade and you want to lock down Nick Chubb as your RB one, or maybe even your RB two, I don't think it's the the worst thing ever to go ahead and draft him. You might be sacrificing value for fantasy points fucking scored in your lineup. Right. Which is, that's the puzzle we're putting together here. Right. You know, that's the conundrum of, Drafting a team that isn't going to die soon, but also can win. It's a, it's a, it's an ebb and flow. If you want to trade a little less too, Chubb's probably a guy for you. Like, you know, and you, and you want to win. Yep. If you're a little bit more of a trader and a wheeler and dealer, like a big co, maybe you're not drafting Chubb. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. So anyway, let's keep it moving here. Let's see. How about Kenny Pickett? How do we feel about Kenny P? What is he at? He's at he's seventh round. Kenny P. Seven oh three QB twenty one for us. What's he on sleeper? Let me check it out. And I, that that's a buy for me. I've been drafting him a decent amount at at seven two, and then I'll come back and and pick up Stafford or Tannehill a little later as my third mm-hmm. quarterback. And I you know usually it's uh, Kenny P. or or I get Russell maybe a little earlier or Daniel Jones even a, a hair earlier, and maybe I have. 
uh, a quarterback from the first or second round. So now I've, I'm set up. But I like I like the upside of Kenny. I like the way he finished down the stretch. The the, the I know he didn't play great teams, uh, but he looked good. He was in every game. He battled back. He, he kept the Steelers competitive. And I think moving forward, uh, you know, again, there is then some sneaky athleticism with with Pickett too, where he can give you a little bit of that Daniel Jones hidden rushing yardage scramble you know it's not lamar jackson by any means uh, or kyler murray but it's you know it's serviceable athleticism that can get you fantasy points yeah so kenny pickett is 81 in sleeper adp which Oops. is uh 709 almost we have him at 703 so that's a half around difference we got a little bit more respect on kenny pickett's name people hate the touchdown to interception ratio he had uh nine interceptions but looking at it from week four to week eight he had eight of those and then then the bye in week nine and then after the bye from weeks 10 to weeks 18 he only had one interception so he got better and he got better throughout the game and he's a gamer and he, he had him in it at the end of, right. of a fair amount of games there's one one game I can recall where he made a he made a bad play at the end. He shouldn't have thrown that ball. He probably should have just rushed it for the first down and got another play out of the end of that game. But he he forced it in there. And then there was other games where he won it at the end. You know, right. it was keeping him in it. He's yeah. a gamer. He showed improvement. He didn't have a head start in off in the off season. They were letting Mitch Trubich fucking have all <laughs> the snaps and 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 be the guy. And then you saw Kenny Pickett come in and he was basically like. Hey, George Pickens, why don't you just go long and I'll throw it to you and we'll move the ball and we'll be competitive. And Najee started to gain some health there. Probably not a coincidence that, that they started to play better at the end. Offensive Najee's line was healthy. also playing better as well, which they've up, upgraded a little. Upgraded. Uh, they, yeah, they, that they was kind of my focus point. on that. Yeah, is that the offensive line's been upgraded. You know, we talked about it a little bit for Najee, I believe, about that. But, but then you also just have to look at the weapons that he's thrown to. I mean, the boys that he's thrown the ball to are – they can catch, you know, Deontay right. Pickens, Fryer um, Allen Robinson's now uh, there, uh, Fryer Muth, like all those guys, they can they can catch the ball. So his accuracy is a, is a big thing for some people. I don't think it's as – I think he's improving on it, and I think that with with the ball catcher radius that these guys have, like the, the, the size of the sun, um, I, I think I'm okay uh, taking the gamble on him. And like yeah. you said, uh, Casey, I think his value – his value to me is low. I think it could definitely it could definitely go down, but I I I feel like it would it could definitely improve, especially if you're a wheeler or a dealer, as we talked about the way you like to build your teams, especially in season. They, uh, Pittsburgh hits a hot streak. I, I think you could definitely get a value value flip on them if you don't love them, or or ride it out if you're if you're winning and and trying to go for that ship, which that's what we're all about here. Uh, if, if you're a wheeler, deal, I don't know. I don't know that the general sentiment in the public for Kenny Pickett is that positive I guess so I would I would go I would go the op I was going to say the opposite like anybody who's listening to fantasy Twitter and those guys I think the the opinion or maybe you're a Steelers he's fan tanks. and it's 50 50 some of those guys think he's great some of they don't but like I know in the home leagues there was a lot of love for Kenny Pickett and in, in the one super flex home league that I'm in people were knocking beating mountain my door for him and they as soon as he stepped on the field just you know he just I think he showed enough to those guys where, you know, the quarterback market is is not that fun uh, once you get past a certain threshold. And Kenny Pickett looks like there's bits and pieces of of that. He could be a really fun quarterback to own uh, in, a, in a good situation. And I'd put Russell right there. We skipped past him a little bit. He's at six, nine. Russell Wilson finished the season uh, really strong last year, uh, you know, three out of four weeks i think he might have been qb1 uh, a qb1 not the qb1 um and you know now you got a whole a whole new scheme you know they've upgraded their line a little bit as well um and and sean payton's in there and they've got a good supporting cast so russ would be you know right up there uh before kenny pickett i would take him uh, and if i miss russ i'll take kenny so I, I like i like the value on russ um and i like this kind of tier here i like I like 6-9 with Pierce and Kincaid. Kincaid may be a little early there. Uh, Swift, Godwin, Flowers, Pickett, Ayuk. And then uh, let's take that right to the next guy, Hollywood Brown, man. Uh, big big buy for me in the offseason was one of the – one of the. I think you might have even been in the Deontay video or maybe it was the next one. Uh, been been a big buy all offseason, and, and I know a favorite of yours, Big D. So um, too low on Marquise. Thoughts? 
Yeah, he's he's way too low for me. I mean, I think he's, you know, we're talking about age, and Marquise feels like he's been around for a while, but I, but I believe he's um. He's twenty. Was he twenty five? I think. I think so. Yeah, this is twenty six on sleepers. Yeah, Must so yeah, I birthday. think he just just had a birthday and and June fourth. You know, oh, there you go. He's a Gemini. Uh, so <laughs> you know. <laughs> like him even more now. I can't now. say I know. I could. T- I can't name unless it's you're my month and my month's weird. It's split in half. I'm like a Pisces, but part of February. I could not tell you what someone's sign was. So that's impressive. Yeah. Well, my I'm a Leo. Too, so I hear you. Um, but so with Hollywood, I mean, so Hopkins gone. I know Kyler may not be back. You know, to start till the, the end of the season, right? Like no, to the end of the season. That no. that was the the, the fear. But I, I think he's got, probably going to be back within the first quarter of the season, mm-hmm. you know, may, maybe going into that second quarter of the season. But, um, and that connection, there's a reason why Hollywood went there. There's a connection there. I, I feel like, you know, the Cardinals are probably going to be, you know, not great, but when you're not great, you normally are, or it's not because of the point scoring, right? I think that they're going to, they're going to be able to put up some points. Hollywood's going to be able to get his and, him going at seven oh five, I just I feel like that's a steal for me. I, right. I feel like he's a he's a, he's a great flex play for me, and 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 if he's in my flex and I can get him at seven oh five, I'm I'm thrilled. Yeah, it's 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 target hog nukes out of there. Uh, he was at Marquise was ridiculous through the first five or six games of the season. There, like wide receiver five was absolutely crushing PPR. Uh, so he he'll get fed with Kyler or and without probably you, right. you know, but. Even more be so, as fun with even more so with Kyler, and I think there's a chance that even Kyler does start the season. It's just maybe not, you know, it's 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 a slow approach. Um, you know, that's not not out of the question. So Hollywood, a big big buy for me, uh, for sure as well. You um, taking Hollywood over Ayuk? Um, probably Ayuk. just because you know it could be just one year here, but I just feel like the volume is going to be better for. I think Ayuk is a fantastic receiver, and if if he Wiggles out of the Niners there. I think I think he's got room to grow as well. Uh, but Hollywood, I think, um, is going to just be so PPR dominant uh, that I, I think I got to give him give him the nudge there. I'm always looking at, at Ayuk. I, I, I just can't I can't stop looking at Ayuk. Uh, interesting thing here: Leo and Pisces love match is full of emotion, passion, and dynamism. Both their signs. Both the signs are highly sensitive, and they do not shy away from expressing their feelings to their partners at any point in time. Leo's mental strength and determination, which is always on display, <laughs> will fascinate a Pisces native. So there's me and Casey's signs for you. Yeah. What did you say you were, Big D? For your pleasure. Uh, Gemini. Gemini. I'll have to do some yeah. digging into that. <laughs> Sounds very That's jammy. what I was thinking. All right. Uh, give, me some, give me some Brandon Ayuk. Let's let's keep it moving here. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll hit one more before we get out of here. Uh, and it's it's you know it's the main course. It's uh, <laughs> what we've been you know chomping our chomping at the bit for here. Big D, Miles Sanders, a, a favorite of of I think everybody here at the FFD. Uh, just a, a great just smash at the, in the seventh or even the sixth really if you wanted to get that high because I just think the volume is going to be there. So. Uh, give us some Miles Sanders uh, too low. Uh, you're in like like with him. Oh, I'm in like like. You know, I'm. Uh, I don't love love. I love Miles Sanders. Uh, <laughs> he, you know, I, I just I just feel like he for for starters he's he's just signed the contract. Contract has decent money. He's got a rookie quarterback there, but he he can catch the ball. Um, you know, I I look underrated O line. I think uh, underrated O line. Yeah, that O line is has been in the past and continues to be pretty decent. Um, I think that the past, the, the past catchers that they have, I, I'm not, they don't, they don't put, uh, they don't put fear into me. I think that they can move the ball, but it, it's not like one of them. I, I, I don't think any of them are going to step up and dominate. So what that tells me is it's going to be a balanced game plan. Uh, again, you have that rookie quarterback. So I just feel like if I'm looking at their roster and I'm saying, okay, who is somebody that I'm going to try to build a game a game plan off of as an offensive coordinator. Miles Sanders is just he's he's at one of the top of the list for me there and so I just see him scoring a lot of points and a 7th round value on him is just, you know, I feel like I'm sleeping with a Sandman. It's 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 unbelievable. So <laughs> Yeah, no, I I agree and then to the to the other point of the defense is is 
underrated and really good. So, you know, while you have a rookie quarterback where you can lean on, hey, we can kind of have a, a I think the passing game will be fine. But like you said, maybe nobody actually, you know, standing out there. Uh, Miles Sanders could be a little bit of the focal point and the defense I think is going to keep him in a lot of games divisions not super great with a bunch of high powered offenses either uh, so you know that defense can keep you around and just keep Miles Sanders just churning opportunities out uh, and and I think he's got the athleticism he can catch uh, he's got he can be the three down guy there and it would seem like and, and Chuba kind of offers you something a little bit different uh, and, and be the rotational guy. So I, I think this is just like, if you don't have a running back yet, Miles Sanders is your target once you get into the sixth round. If, if you know, let's say you don't like Dobbins or he's gone or maybe you don't like Damian Pierce or whatever, um, Miles Sanders could be fine with over any of those guys and just just being stoked about the points that I think are about to be scored uh, and the usage that's going to be there. So, um, Leo, Gemini, and Pisces, I Googled it. <laughs> top three go. the headline top three most trustworthy zodiac signs so <laughs> Ooh, there you go. that's who you should be getting your fantasy football advice from yeah not some fucking capricorn <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that much right now <laughs> get your charts out folks uh, yeah a gemini what? is also a good keep secret keeper which is um, I, I skipped down to gemini make sure they never switch sides if they're with you since the beginning which that's big D. Big They're D, likely yeah. to stay that way till the end. Yes, sir. <laughs> and we'll do anything to save you. So I know who to call if I need something. I'm in big D up. <laughs> Honest and trustworthy know. people. Very rare that they might be betray or disappoint you at any given time. Big big shoes to fill there, big D. That's a that's a Yeah, man. I have to keep a reserve of bail money for all my friends, I'll <laughs> yeah. tell you. It's just like People um, do be telling me the wildest shit. And I must give off a non-judgy vibe because people be telling yeah. me the wildest shit. Exactly. My apologies. So what, Are you into astrology? Because um, I'm trying to make it to Uranus. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Kanye getting it in with him. Little Jadakiss. Hmm. Boom. So what's, what's, okay, so uh, we got Kanye. off track. We're going to bring it back in real quick. Nah. I, Reel it back uh, in. Reel, <laughs> Reel it back, back in. in. Closer pivot. Uh, what's your what's your take <laughs> on Miles Sanders? Me Jay? or Jay? No, Me? I know oh, yours. Yeah. yeah, you've you've said yours. Oh, I was just I moved on to um... <laughs> zodiac signs. Man, <laughs> fuck right. Miles Sanders. Nah, I'm just kidding. I, I, I man, I, I've. I don't know what to think about Miles Sanders. This probably I, I, he's I a Taurus. Dis- I can't disagree with you guys. <laughs> I can't disagree with y'all, you know? Can he stay healthy? The only time I've ever depended on Miles Sanders, he's let me down. So I have a hard time with Miles Sanders. Um, I've had him on some redraft teams where I had good teams, and I didn't know whether to start him or not. And every time I fucking did, he broke his wrist or some shit. Like, <laughs> So I just was like... Jason holds grudges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the sign, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't say anything about a spectacular memory. Taurus, Taurus forgives and, but and never forgets. Whatever he is doesn't get along. <laughs> um, yeah, Pisces, don't fuck it up. Yeah, Pisces. Um, I'm I'm not mad at the uh, I'm not mad at the Miles Sanders ADP right there. We're 79. You know. Yeah. Uh, I could be looking at at Jahan. A yeah, bit. I, th- I, I think like we all like Jahan, I think we all like Jahan. I think we all love Deontay. We've mentioned it multiple sure, times. That, sure. That's a smash, smash, smash. Yeah, uh, like the. Gift, the hatchet guy, hitchhiker. I don't know if you guys would know what I'm talking about uh, there. You know what I'm talking about, Big D? Yes. Yeah. Is that that's up in your neck of the woods, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the hatchet killer or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um and D- Darren Waller, we're not getting super deep. Like I mentioned before, Odell Beckham, I think, is super late in these ADPs and, and Odell could, Beckham. could really have a um uh, throw you off with that. Yeah, a good he, comeback. He's in. He's in. He's at sixteen ten for our ADP. Odell is. Oh. I, I think that's just. Oh. that's outstanding. And he could really oh, come in. He could be a way. just solid wide receiver too all year long. Um, if he could stay healthy, but it doesn't matter. Even if even if he's in the thirteenth round, uh, it doesn't matter. Like I just, right. I, it, you might even if I only get one year from him. 
you know, you're hoping that your team's going to be competitive or you, maybe you can sell them off to a competitive team. But I think Odell, just as, a, as a, there's a ton of other later guys that I like. I love, I love Trey McBride. I love Connor. Um, you know, there's some, some just getting a little bit further down the line there. Um, and then Waller and Schultz have been two tight ends if we miss early. Or even if we get early, I'll, I'll double down. If I got pits, yeah. I'll shit, I'll double down on Schultz in the 11th or 10th. Uh, right now, Schultz is uh, 10-3 for us, and Waller is uh, 809. 8-0-9. So, yeah. like, I like both of those guys a lot. Um, I've been, I actually have been like, if I miss on tight ends and I go Darren Waller, then I'll, I'll, I might even come back the next round and take Michael Mayer or wait around and then take Laporta. So I kind of just doubled up on what could what what could be and i think what is going to be like with waller going to be way higher than tight end nine if healthy uh through this season he could be tight end too um so uh for me that's been a strategy or if i take schultz has been trying to get laporta um and then you know the the packers tight ends we kind of talked about them they're going pretty late if i get a a little bit veteran guy i might i might be shooting on at some of those uh younger tight ends but We'll have plenty of time to kind of get into all that. Anybody got anything to close up shop with? Any other guys that you uh, like, like, uh, or anything else you want to mention before we get out of here? Kendra Miller's on this list. Kendra, for sure. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come through here with a draft strategy of kind of fading uh, what the big draft people say and and drafting to kind of a win now and going in on running backs a little bit, and then I'm also gonna do a flip side of that and and say you know hey do what do what the big draft people are saying, uh, understand that they're saying that and that the value is going to be on the wide receivers and the younger players. Uh, so I'm going to try to lay out all that in a little bit more articulate fashion and give you some examples uh, in the next couple shows here. So uh, that's why you should like subscribe. Again, we're doing a live stream uh, at least three times a month until the season starts. Uh, so be sure to plug into that we'll be doing mocks we're gonna do one quarterback on this next one we did a super flex tight end premium on the last one uh so we'll be switching those up uh and come get a spot at the ff dynasty on twitter uh we'll tweet that link out when there's a couple spots left and then five dollar holler on patreon big d did you have something although i felt like i cut you off no no i'm i'm listening to the to the end of the wrap-up just rival uh, rivalry brewing you know the ffd shirt get it get it while it's hot yeah, if you, there's multiple ways to support the team. You can get the shirt. It's a great shirt. It fits really well. I'd size it up uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna they run us. They run a, a schmidge schmall. Yeah, they're for uh, you know regular size people, and even then, it's you know there's a sizeism I think in the shirt industry mm-hmm. uh, going around. Mm-hmm. So we should straighten that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can go to revelrybrewingco.com. Uh, and get the shirt to support the team you can five dollar holler or you could just five star review it and subscribe and that helps your boys out too uh all sorts of good content back and there's going to be all sorts of content uh moving forward so we appreciate y'all um and uh please say the f for fun yeah one of the f's is for fun have a little fun (laughs) there's nothing wrong with it uh, and we'll be switching to we'll do some we'll, we'll, with redraft too once uh middle of july end of july comes around we'll be uh we'll get into some redraft as well so we'll be your one-stop shop for all your fantasy needs and then in season we'll carry it right into live streams and uh you know actually talking about football instead of the spreadsheets of football which a lot of our uh, competitors will probably be doing so we'll see you next time appreciate you all for joining us peace